His DK, okay. he used to be a DK main for about two years. Okay. So his DK is definitely polished and rather so clean. Sorry to interrupt, but let's no get problem. into the game. Oh yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, Mute and WT Fox? Uh, what the Fox? <laughs> um, so yeah, Mute is probably the m single most efficient player in Switzerland. When I watch him, I have to be honest, it doesn't look very clean, it doesn't look very polished, but he's just so efficient at getting the Shoryukens, especially against boss fallers. Uh, as you can see, he's playing Shoryu... Uh, not Shoryuken. He also use other, he uses other moves. <laughs> playing Ryu. Um, what the Fox, the name... Uh, how do you say? Uh, Norman is the woman. Playing Fox. Um, this matchup is a heartbreaker, basically. Yeah, it is. It is close to even according to a lot of Fox players nowadays. However, in theory, yes. In, in practice, theory, yeah. No. In practice, it's just really hard to get around that up tilt for Fox. Such a close range fighter, and that is exactly where Ryu thrives, and he gets so no. much punishment out of those situations. Oh, sad SD. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunate on the Fox attack right there. However, we already what see. What the Fox is impressive. Yeah, he is. <laughs> He's definitely aggressive. Have you already seen Mute no, trying to look for... Oh, impressive, for sure. But um, aggressive as well. Aggressive as well. <laughs> yeah, the matchup is basically Fox just destroys you, Ryu in advantage. No chance. Yep. And then when it comes to killing, it just gets hard. And you die at 60. It does get hard. However, Fox does have that two-hit up air as... Oh. oh. Two SDs. Two SDs. We can't right. be happy about that game one. Mute takes it, of course. And that's where it really gets hard against Ryu, when you have to play kind of carefully and right. you can't really go for the pressure because usually Fox can pressure Ryu rather safely. He has the multi-hits, he has the pressure tools, he has the safe and shield tools. He has a lot of speed that Ryu yeah. does not have. Uh, however, if you are on the back foot, that is going to be rough on the Fox player. Because Ryu, of course, always has basically the shotgun trigger with the Shoryuken that just beats yep. basically all of Fox's moves and kills so early. Especially at those percents where Fox is at like 60, Ryu's yeah. at like a 100. Yeah. Uh, he can pull the trigger and if it works, he gets so much more out of it. He and can really play the risk reward versus Fox. And even more especially on this stage that he decided to counter pick. Oh, they go for a button check. Yeah, <laughs> what the Fox not happy about that SD. He's blaming it on the controller, no chance. I, it seems like his controller's working. I don't know what's up with this. <laughs> Maybe unplugged and nah, plugged in I again. I definitely yeah, agree with it. It's, it's, um, it's best to just make sure that there's nothing yeah. wrong with your controller, right? Because that's the, the worst way to lose. Yeah. So they're just going to SD right now and get that game going again as soon as possible. With Fox, that's something with the Firefox that hop happens very often because the timing where the Firefox kind of locks in your direction is very weird. Yeah. And sometimes when awkward. you kind of have sweaty hands and you slip off the stick and re-grab it instantly, it just gets some weird angle and you're just dead. I got what you mean. Let's hope no more controller issues arise in this set. Because I, uh, based on what we saw, right? That was beautiful. It was very, it was very back and forth. Yeah, and very entertaining to watch. I mean, Fox is hype. I That's hope I don't just yep. say that as a Fox player, but overall Smash 4. No, see, seeing Fox build up momentum is definitely one of the yeah. more beautiful things in this game. And Ryu, you know, he is the momentum breaker with that invincible yeah. Shoryu and that Fox attack as well. Ryu is just one of those guys that always keeps it interesting, no matter how far back it is. Exactly. Sometimes, especially against Fox, even more than Bayo. I think, because just Shoryu can... Yep, and he has, he the has crazy combos. Look at that, the percentage is looking pretty <coughs> even, but Fox is here with I mean, a Fox great advantage die. state. Yeah, Fox is in kill percent. Straight sure. up, Fox can die. <laughs> oh, I'm actually uh, surprised to see him drop that. Okay, interesting oh. down. Good DI by WT Fox, and look at that, going straight back to center stage. Nice and air Messing up the 50-50. Oh, and nice up. Wow, wow, he's still living. Oh. Okay. <gasps> oh, he again. messed up again. That, oh, has no. to be, that has to be horrible for the mindset. And what? let's see, I hope WP Fox keeps it together here and makes the comeback happen. Yeah, because this is usually, if Fox players, f um, how do you say, fall, fall, fall behind? Uh, no, fall, um, they just lose is when they lose the first stock and Ryu has moment, has, mom has right, right. rage. Yeah, yeah, when they fall behind basically. <laughs> yeah, when they, yeah, no, um, 
when they lose is what I wanted to say, not right. when they fall behind. Okay. Because he's already behind. <laughs> right, yeah. And yeah, I can see him kind of going for risky options right now, that F smash at the ledge. Look at that, using that down air multi hit to keep his advantage state going, but Ryu's back air just so huge. Fox barely getting past that up smash with the neutral air, forward throw almost killing at the side. And right now, every time he has to approach... Oh! Oh, Ooh. he tried to go for the down air, tried to get a, bit, a little bit flashy. Yeah, this is really the worst case scenario for Fox because Ryu can do whatever yeah, he wants it. and that should be it. Clean. Mute yeah. 2-0 and what a shame for WT Fox. However, yeah. at the end of the day, that's just how it that's goes sometimes. Begun. Yeah, and I mean, you can't just blame it on the SD. Um, Mute played his win conditions basically for sure. perfectly. For sure. Played on just surviving and he used that focus... Focus Punch is a move that is very hard to use against Fox. For sure. Because Fox has those very good multi-hit aerials. Yep. The kill confirm out of the multi-hit landing aerial. Right. Um, but uh, Mute still got two of those for the knockout, yeah, I think. Or at and least they, one. they both, they yeah, both one, led yeah, into it. a lot of damage or a kill. And that's so very important. And I think the thing that we really saw come out there from Mute was he was very collected very calm collected yeah. he i didn't see any random sure use uh his focus attacks were on point never at the wrong time and i think that's very impressive because he had a lot of leeway to work with but rather than risk it he decided you know what i'm gonna stick to my game plan i'm gonna try to keep it clean and that really showed in that game have you seen mute actually do you know mute no i have not seen mute he's he's <laughs> very impersonative of you i think he's kind of a <laughs> A little bit bulky Asian, very calm, very collected. Okay. And that's his playstyle, and that's the character. Ryu has a very similar uh, personality, I think. Very similar demeanor, I don't know yeah, Street Fighter sure. games, but he seems so in Smash. And Mute just brings that into the game. He never gets, uh, he never gets scared. He never gets shaky. He never drops those Shoryuken combos. Right. That's very impressive and very important for yeah. a Ryu main. So on stage right now we have Waves oh, and Oh, that's gonna Benji. be exciting! Another Fox. Let's go. <laughs> Benji, I actually believe right now the best Fox in Switzerland. Okay. Um, it's not you? Since Smuff doesn't play Fox anymore or not as much anymore, I don't exactly know. No, my Fox is whack. <laughs> <laughs> I have the much better advantage than Benji, but he's just, he's very good in neutral. He's very safe. Okay. He recovers very good. So we see this matchup a lot in Europe, especially in the UK. The UK has a lot of Sonics and a lot of Foxes as well. Of course, and we have to play against. Uh, we have to talk about the Sonic Waves, one of the top five players in Switzerland right now. Best Sonic in Switzerland. Yep. Um, in Switzerland, we don't really know the Sonic matchup that well because he's the only kind of viable one, to be honest. And he's been gone for a few months. I mean, he's back now for maybe one or two months, okay. and there hasn't been too much lately. And yeah, I'm gonna. It's interested, interesting to see how it's gonna turn out. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, I think Waves is a good player. Um, he's, he's also rapidly improving. Yeah, Sorry to cut you off. Li like we mentioned, he's very focused on improving quickly. I haven't seen anything of Benji before, but I'm really interested to see how he approaches the, so uh, the, f yeah, the Sonic Fox matchup. There's a lot of tools that Fox has that can really, really put a number on on, on Sonic. Yeah, Benji has never actually been abroad. Um, he's started to attend more recently. He's finished his apprenticeship lately and now okay. he's kind of grinding a lot, I think, and playing a lot. We I play a lot with him online and okay. he's improving very quickly and he's just very good. Already seeing some patient play from Benji, but Waves immediately breaking that, that zone that Benji's trying to set up. Yeah, I actually think Benji's not really trying to set up a zone. That's just early game Fox guy going for a few lasers, kind of feeding out the opponent. Right. He's um, a very kind of intermediate Fox if it comes to playstyle. Not aggressive, but not defensive either. Okay. Already, what I really like from Benji here is that as soon as Sonic is in the air, he is there to make sure yeah. that Sonic stays in disadvantage. Oh, bad side B. Just outside Ooh. of the range. Drops out of the fair. Drops out of the fair for sure. And look at that. Shields for full spin dash and gets a little bit of a juggle situation but Waves immediately making sure that he is out of disadvantage with the quickness that Sonic, I mean Sonic has all the tools he needs to move around. Yeah. And while while Fox obviously a very fast character can can definitely make uh, make sure that the ooh, that the disadvantage keeps keep keeps up. 
However, with the mix-up that Waves is showing, it just looks to be really hard for Benji yeah. to keep that advantage state going. And he'll wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> Reverse S smash, first knockout, 90%. Uh, what I wanted to say actually is exactly about that. Will Waves has been kind of disappointed with himself lately. He lost to Blerton, a Mario and Bowser Jr. main in, from Switzerland lately okay. at a semi-local tournament. And he's been not very happy with his off, uh, abroad uh, um, results, yep. performances. But right now he's showing why he is top 5 in Switzerland. He's very dominant. Benji's getting nothing started. I mean, oh. right now a jungle yep. situation. I don't want to curse him. This is the first real advantage state, extended advantage state that we've seen from Benji. And it's gotten him like nearly all the damage that he has so far. Look at this. It's gonna be big for him if he wants to win the game. Nice because he grab on the spot dodge. Yeah, but Ooh. then again, he has so much to make up. And Waves already overlaps sure. him and Waves kind of dropping his advantage right now, but let's see if he can pick it back up right here. The nice, nice thing here for Waves is that playing Sonic with the percentage advantage means that you have a lot of leeway to just play defensive. You don't need to push your advantage state. You don't need to risk yourself like that. You can just wait for Sonic to approach, which he, he does have issues approaching through Spin Dash, right? And yeah. as soon as you catch him out making a bad decision, you can just get your, your, your chip damage, your hit and run, and reset the neutral over and over again without risking anything. And we really see Waves playing a good defensive game right here. And he's just, just not, not, getting not up leaving up any gaps. Yeah. Whenever he gets an opening, he gets kind of those arbitrary minimum 20, 25 percent. Yeah. Then he's out of there. Spin dash combo and reset the neutral. Exactly. Very and smart. Very he smart. He saw a chance. Got the up air to the knockout, and that's the first game. Very convincing showing by Waves. He seems to be on point today. Let's see sure. if Benji ha still has something to hold against the pressure by Will. I think the main Benji. thing Benji is gonna look for here is to keep those advantage state going for longer than he did last game. Uh, we saw we saw Benji get one advantage state that yeah. really that he really pushed very far. Yeah and he pushed it well. But outside of that we didn't see any any advantage state pushing and that's really the one thing that you need to do versus Sonic because he does not have amazing landing tools. He has a lot of mix ups but they're exactly that they're mix ups. His main options are they're not very strong. Yeah. So if you do keep those mix ups covered and stay patient in that regard, then you really can do a number on Sonic in your advantage state. However, Benji, it's, it, it might be a matter of uh, matchup knowledge, but overall, it's just not been working out for him too well. Yeah, and um, I think, yeah, that's, as you said, I think matchup knowledge is a big thing here because we don't have that many Sonics. We have Will, and I don't think Benji and Will ever played. Will is Wave, obviously. Oh yeah, sorry. Of use it. <laughs> I tried to use their gamer tags. No, I understand. <laughs> it can be, it can be rough. And look at this nice little 50-50 by Waves guessing wrong though. Benji lives to fight another day on Town of City. Interesting counter pick. I understand that Town of City is very nice for Fox. However, it is without a doubt Sonic's best stage. Um, yeah, the sure. platforms give him a lot of rooms to do spin dash tricks to get out of disadvantage. He can do uh, up throw, up bees on very very. Or well, not very, very, but relatively low percentages that normally should not result in a kill. And getting that oh, kill is also trade. very important for Sonic. And just like that, he does get that kill. Yeah, then again, Fox definitely has the speed to kind of make up those big spaces on Talent City. For sure. But right now, Will just... He doesn't even need really the space. He just wins neutral often enough where this is very heavy, very hard. Yeah, and once again, just like last game, as soon as Waves has the lead, he just starts playing defensively and he just forces Benji to come to him. Yeah, and just kind of getting into the defense of a defensive Sonic that plays it well and that knows his flow charts basically, knows his stuff. Right. As Will does, he's a very study-heavy player, takes a lot of notes. So I'm sure he knows how to play against Fox and that's just, that's just where it gets hard. He definitely has all his um, set play on deck. Right now, Benji's having a lot of issues getting around that Sonic neutral, those spin dashes, those invincible spin dashes. Extremely strong. Look at that. Up B uh, forward air. Gonna be a nice little combo. Oh, Sonic too high of a percent to really get anything out of the 50 50 when he lands that up tilt. So, Benji is gonna be in a rough spot here off stage. Yeah, he basically has to get the landing there or down there, and you don't get those on Sonic. Simply put, it's you don't get it's those. It's really hard. As soon as yeah. you jump in on Sonic, if he does have that spin dash charge, he can just let it rip, 
get his invincibility and just and that's the set and, and the set and the set like that well done by waves uh, living up to not his name but his reputation yep um winning 2-0 double two stock i think yeah it was very hard for benji to just get anything going yeah uh, there's not really much to say about the match that's just very clean sonic play yep by the book yeah nothing not much to say it was just very correct very clean yeah. very and you know that's one, one of those things that's just important about playing Sonic because um, when you do get hit, you're in for a world of hurt. So you got to make those neutral interactions count. Yeah. And that is kind of Sonic's design, right? He does have that high damage option in Spin Dash that's also so very, very safe. Um, and one thing that I really wanted Benji to do more was rely on Shield. Because Sonic does have issues getting around Shield. He does have that strong Spin Dash. And Spin Dash doesn't outright lose to Shield. But if you Shield Spin Dash, you do put Sonic in a mix-up scenario that can put him into that disadvantage that you want him to be in. And playing around with your spacing, baiting Sonic to release his Spin Dash by uh, posing aggressively, but not committing aggressively and then yeah. going for that defensive shield that's that that's that's like the the essence of the sonic matchup yeah i'll take notes on that i'm bad at the matchup too <laughs> thanks for the help um overall just fox has that crisp one of the crispest movements in the game for sure and again sonic it can be hard to use because it can be intercept very quickly hard to react yep but you basically have to use it otherwise you're in for trouble yeah certainly as you and said we that's have our next match yeah. ready already. Sorry to interrupt you. No, that's exactly what um, I was going to get at. We have Shido versus Sintro, if I'm correct. I actually don't know both of them. Okay, Sintro so Sh I Shido is uh, a French Mario player. I saw Sintro. Oh, sorry. Shido is a French Mario player, and Sintro is a Swiss Rob, right? I don't think Sintro is Swiss. He's not Swiss. Because I've never seen him before. Okay, oh, Austrian Austria. Rob. Okay, okay. I'm I sorry. My apologies. With Rob. It was con convincing Rob. Uh, very good. Okay. Yep. I didn't see too much, but... I actually managed to play him in uh, doubles Okay. yesterday. And uh, he, he had some impressive tech. He was a very... Um, I would say he's a very read-heavy player. He really likes to get in your head and get those big big risk, big reward uh, moves going. On the other hand, Shido. Shido has a few good wins under his belt. Uh, okay. And the last album... Shido is from where? From France. France. Okay. So last Albion, he actually managed to beat Jackie, J DK Ho. Okay. Wow. Uh, so that's a strong win. And outside of that, he has uh, mixed results in France. He usually places um, higher in the bracket, but never quite top eight. Okay. Um, so I'm really interested to see how he deals with this Rob. There are some Robs in France, like uh, Vanaheim, I think, is the most prominent one. Very strong Rob as well. And I can, I, I really expect him to know his stuff about the Rob matchup because this matchup is relatively even. Rob does have good walling. That neutral air is going to be a strong tool against Mario because Mario does not have the speed to intercept. The yeah, overall, air. overall, I can see Mario having trouble getting in against Rob. Yep. Rob has the neutral air, and the, of course, the thing Rob is famous for all the items, all the projectiles, gyro, laser. And that can be very hard for Mario to get in. Then again, if Mario gets in, Rob is that big, floaty. Hurt box. Yep. Yep, for I sure. Can However, just get destroyed by one or two combos. That's definitely true. And he's definitely vulnerable to Mario's up smash, especially since it is disjointed. However, when Rob is getting juggled, he has an easy time landing if he does get that Nair off. Because that Nair is extremely safe. And Mario's rising aerials are just not that threatening for Rob. So if Shido does not get those up smashes, it's going to be relatively easy for Rob to land especially on a stage with more platforms. So that's something I'm really interested in. I really want to see where these two players are going to strike to. What yeah. do you think are good stages for Mario in this match? I mean, Mario, of course, uh, has basically spread and butters, Town and City and Battlefield. Uh -huh. Town and City, maybe not so much, but Battlefield, just with the platform extensions, he can get crazy combos for off sure, of that. Especially on a big body like Rob. Town and City... Um, and has the platforms that leave, so juggling or catching landings with the Pippa Crab can get easier, and he can kill with the up smash earlier. But we are going to see the battlefield, so that is that stage you were, you were highlighting for Mario. A strong stage for his combos, however, a strong stage for Rob as well. 
It is, and those platforms are really going to help him land. However, both of these characters land, uh, kill upwards. We have Rob with that beep boop, the famous down throw up air. On the other hand, we have Mario with that up smash. So both of these players are going to live for that much longer yeah. on Battlefield. Especially Rob, because he's very heavy. Very heavy. Um, and one other thing I want to say is that the platforms may even come in a little bit more handy for uh, Rob, especially later on, because he can poke those much better than Mario. For example, with his up smash, which comes out surprisingly fast right. and is surprisingly big. I tried to jump out of it once. <laughs> that again. did not work, yep. I jumped higher than I expected. Um, <laughs> jump into the blast zone, right? But here's the Mario combo. Ah, oh, not too much of it. One thing that I really like to highlight, talking about platform pressure, is Rob's up tilt. It's actually a really strong tool for platform pressure because it's relatively lagless. That should not kill, yep. However, the percentages are even out. Sintro trying to get off the ledge. Shido not really getting much of a ledge trap. And he does get grabbed. The 50 50! 50 50 for the first KO. Very nice air dodge read. Yep, not the greatest DI by Shido, but I think due to the height that they were both at, he was going to be dead regardless. So Sintro taking that early lead right yeah. here on Battlefield, and now he can focus on surviving. Yeah. And that's going to be relatively easy versus Mario, Especially because he is so not yet in up smash kill percents. And yes, the projectiles, of course. Mario, For not sure. the, biggest, big, the best game to get in, and Rob, very good game to keep others out. Mario definitely struggling here. Look at those jabs. Rob just gonna jump over those with that neutral air. That neutral air also oh safe, and Mario has to interrupt somehow, and Shido's just not... See, if you look at tempo, Shido is doing all these landing aerials. He's throwing all, uh, all these ground moves, but we don't see any rising back airs, for example, to interrupt. For example, that neutral air that's also oh important for Sintro in this matchup. However, right now, being on that kill percent for up smash, that is gonna descent to... Uh, it is gonna be rough for Rob to jump here. Because as soon as you jump, Mario yeah. can be there with the up smash. A little bit of a roll mind game right there. Ooh, tries to go for some sneaky item play at the ledge. Oh, that oh, yeah, power shoot, that is gonna be the kill. And Shido, a triple one, baby. He can make it up. However, it's gonna be really rough. Using that rage to get a combo going. Tries to go for the double fair. Yep, good amount of damage, though. And ooh, that oh, side B has to be shield. a missed input. However, it does work out for Sintro. Another side B. Shido just playing it, playing it slowly, Beep. trying to get the cape. No boop. No boop at Not all. Today. And that's one of those things about Rob that B boop is extremely strong. However, avoiding the grab is relatively easy. Mario, on the other hand, as a close range fighter, he wants to grab himself. That does make it harder for him to avoid Rob's grab because he does put himself in that range. Yeah, we really see, um, I think, Sintro could play his advantage even a little bit more. Just hang back a little bit more, punish Mario's uh, um, trials to get in. Right, his approaches, and yeah. just like that. However, Shido is clo slowly clawing his way back into the game. All that rage on him, and that up throw is definitely going to do it. The platform assisting as well. Sintro takes game one. Yeah, that's actually something we didn't talk about at all. If you get the grab under the top platform, that up throw can kill very I don't early. think it goes all the way to the top platform, but it does reach the side platforms. Okay. I thought it works similarly to Meta Knight and Charizard. It does not, it does not go okay. that high. So okay. the side platforms will assist, but the top platforms not really. However, we did see Sintro play around those side platforms a lot. So once, once yep. you are standing under that platform, you are taking away one of your opponent's approach options. Uh, Mario cannot jump over all the projectiles because he is going to get blocked by that platform. So Sintro playing really well in his anti-approach and walling game. Yeah, and just using his advantage as soon as he's up to stay up and kind of slowly closing that bag. Yep, and that's exactly what Rob wants to do, just play his own pace. We see Shido getting an early cape that's nice going to do a lot of damage. However, as soon as neutral restarts, it's it's back to square one for, for Shido. He just has to make his way back in. And Sintro is also happy to just sit back and wait. Shido kind of starting to punish all the um, projectiles, starting to go for the cape. We didn't see that at all in the first game. No, no successful capes anyway. And just like that, the bait by Sintro immediately catching on to the cape. Getting that grab, no follow-up though, and the percentages are looking mighty even, especially considering the weight of these these characters. Look at that, nice little gyro. 
Cheeto. Great, great item usage right here. Great usage of the item to extend his advantage. Recatching re the gyro again, but now it's finally gone. And look at and this he gets it again. ledge play. See, the thing about Final Destination is that there's nowhere for Rob to land, right? Yeah. And when there's nowhere for Rob to land, that is when Mario are gonna, is going to get all those up smashes that he really wants to get to close out the stock before Rob gets to his rage. Ooh, the air dodge. That's not going to be oh, safe. But the neutral air beat the up smash. smash. Yep. Cheeto really fishing for the kill now. And the rage back air nearly going to end it. Oh, but he, he did not jump. have a jump. Cheeto. And that means so much. That, that means first so knockout much. means so much, especially against a character that can, that can play as defensive and that can play as effective defensively yep. as, Rob. as Rob. Exactly. However, what I really like about Shido is he's really picking up all the gyros, making the most out of them, getting those getting those combos, but also just like advantage state extensions. Yeah, and just like that, the up smash on final because there was nowhere for Sintro to land. Yeah, that's something I hate when players... Also, um, we have two very good Pac-Mans in Switzerland. And those are also those item plays. I hate to see when players just don't use their opponent's items and yep. just leave them for free. And Shido definitely not doing that. He's making Ogre Fox happy. I love to see good counter item play. Yeah, he's making the most out of the resources available to him. Look at that Z drop, but it's oh. gonna get Z drop. Uh, but Z of count. course, Sintro has those item plays left out. That was yeah. beautiful. Sintro immediately picking that item back up, making sure the most is used. Uh, the most mileage has gotten out of that item for himself as well. Good item play in Smash is as rare as it is Ooh, beautiful. Ooh, almost getting the confirm Sintro. So close to getting that. Or would not have resulted in a kill, but would definitely have been a lot of damage. Nice smash. And just like that, I think Beep Boop is coming soon, and Sintro knows it. <gasps> the up Catches smash on the, the regular normal get up. Get up. Wow, yeah, wow. Sintro kind of was in his head, just slowly finishing that choke hold that he placed sure. on Shido. And getting the 2-0 victory. Shido definitely stepped up his game for the second game. For sure. But it was not quite enough. Sintro showing how strong he is as a player. Very, very talented Rob. And he's going to advance. I think we only have first seed versus second seeds on stage Probably today. Yes. So we are going to see Sintro getting that first seed out of his pools. Very likely. Okay, next up. Oh, yes, I'm excited. <laughs> Tell me, who are these He's players? He's already Agro Fox. Okay, we're gonna see Mike playing Ike. He's another local from here, Mike. not just local. Mike from plays Ike? Yep. Cool. Not just the local from Switzerland, but a local fr from Zurich. Just a little down the lake. Okay. Um, probably the best Ike right now in Switzerland. Um, do you know uh, Radiance? Yep, yep. He's probably about as good as uh, Radiance, okay. but Radiance stopped playing, so he's definitely the best Ike. All right. He's very good, very neutral base, has a very, very clean neutral. Good edge guarding. Um, and sadly, I have to be honest, I don't know the other player. Okay. So we do have an Ike right here. And I think it's very interesting. I saw some of uh, the Ike changes for Smash Ultimate, and <laughs> they're so looking good. very he's exciting. so good. He's very strong. That aerial up smash. <laughs> aerial up smash. Mike, Down Mike tilt told to me up all air, morning. Kills at 50. He wanted to talk about Smash 5 with me all morning because he's so <laughs> excited about the Ike changes. A lot of Ike players all around the world very, very excited yeah, to play be, the new character. Be. Especially since you can do anything out of a run. You can just approach yeah. with a down tilt. Very, very strong change for a character like Ike. Corrin, on the other hand, <laughs> she's sad. I mean, she okay. could do her strongest run, uh, move out of a run anyway. Yeah. So nothing changed, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if nothing changed, you don't have to be sad. You can be okay. Fox, that's fine. Yeah, that's Fox, true. on the other hand. Yeah, Fox uh, got uh, got demolished. Come, but come but back, to be please, fair, I think, I think... Uh, Wolf respect. Okay, look at it this way, right? This game has apparently been in development for two years yeah. now. And there's six more months to go. Yeah. That's like 20% of the development cycle. That's a lot of changes still in store. Yeah, and we're going to have patches afterwards. The yep. hope is dealt there for my boy. I No, I hope Fox just stays trash. He's been good for like four games in a row now. Yeah, that's four out of four. You got to keep the streak nah, going. Nah, nah. You got to keep the streak going. It's time going. for a new king, I mean, dude. I mean, Corin is, al is also on 100% right now, so... <laughs> That's true, but she did get nerfed, so... Let's talk about the match. Okay, okay. We're gonna see Kirby, actually. Kirby against versus Ike. Ike. All right. That's two so polar opposites as a character. Kirby kind of <laughs> juggle-heavy and has those short limbs. Yep. And Ike with the big-ass sword. 
Both these characters are relatively slow, though, and that's going to be oh, very Kirby's important. Fast. Kirby's so we, fast. Kirby's okay. She, she's fast-ish. And it is going to be ah, the Sweet Shock. Sweet Shock, one of the best Kirby's in Europe. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. So Will just hit us with the insider information. Of course, we all right. should know Chess We Shock. I just didn't know him from the appearance. Best uh, Kirby in Europe, I think. I don't know any other one, to he, be honest. Him, him, him and Muck are two of the best. And then there's also um, the German Kirby, SDN. Also a strong okay. Kirby. However, it's just Sweet Shock one. I mean, he has the most results probably in all of Europe. Yeah. Uh, and he is familiar with the cloud uh, with the Ike matchup. But the Mike definitely putting up a Mike, good yeah. show so far. Um, he's got Kirby in kill percent, and he's not really gotten so much after that. Here's the forward there. Another one will definitely close it out. Kirby can have a hard time recovering because her up B has that awkward moment yep. on top when it she's vulnerable. Definitely does vulnerable. not snap until it goes down, and that is going to be a big, big deal. Oh. Mike, however, not the greatest recovery either. And no punish by Jesus Shock. However, Jesus Shock is immediately getting a grab, throwing him back off stage, making sure this sta this advantage stage keeps uh, yeah, keeps going and, and going. I have to say, right now it seems like Jesus Shock finished reading the book called Mike. <laughs> he's not gotten he's got like 10 percent more in the last minute. However, Ike is gonna have all that kill power, so Kirby is gonna be at kill percent right now, and he oh. does have. A few mix-ups, even 50-50s off of his down throw. And nice, waiting for the back. air dodge, getting the up air. That strong move that doesn't have any vertical um, range right yep. now, but soon to come. Combo breaker up again at sweet 14% and Ike. I mean, he's still in it. Look at the, the weight difference and not just that, the kill power difference as well. So a lot of room for, for Mike to work with still. Yeah, especially if Shesvi Shok uh, has trouble finding the kill, which may very well happen against a character as heavy as Ike. Yep. Ike's gonna get those oh. up tilt and everything. Kirby's, very Kirby's soon. back air landing animation actually crouches under Ike's, Ike's grab. That's gonna be a big, big differentiating factor in this matchup. Yeah. And Kirby's back air, one of his strong. Yep. Is it his or her or it? It's an it. Okay. But you can you can go with either, I think. No, I usually go with it. Also, all the Pokemon. Are it for me? No, no, no. Ivy Star is a girl. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Ivy Star is a girl. Yeah, but usually if I talk about Ivy Star in general, it's neutral. Oh, look at that. That's the punish. Just a grab. Is that going to be a 50? No, a 50 not even a 50 50. Not versus a character like Kirby. So light. However, I, I don't think I agree with that grab punish. I think Mike could have gotten a lot more out of it. However, in the heat of the moment, it's obviously going to be a lot harder to decide on the optimal move choice. And just with Shock on the on, on the back foot here, he's going to have to avoid that sword because every swing can be the end of his stock. And that back air is going to make his way through the wall. Oh, and nice another back, back air. air. Catching the side B recovery. Mike doing a great job avoiding the first hit, but then still gets caught by the Shock follow up. So very strong with that double jump. Keeping making up the sure he's, yeah, he stays in, in the vicinity. And he really needs to do that because as soon as he as he moves away from Ike, he's giving Ike that range advantage that yeah. he doesn't really want Ike to have, right? Yeah, and if Ike, Ike has that curry and uh, can have a hard time getting in with those short aerials, and it's very similar for Fox, you just get caught by one aerial and you're dead. Exactly. Even harder for Curry, probably. So we're getting into game two, back to final destination. But this was definitely a fight, not as one-sided as some matches we've seen so far. So <laughs> I'm ve very excited for the second game. On we are back to and the final grab And another down air is going to be the footstool. No, he misses the footstool. Smart from Mike, no going for the jump, but instantly up being, knowing he can get back. Doesn't want to give the chance for the footstool. I think he did jump, however he did. Uh, um, what you have to do versus Kirby is you have to SDI the down air okay. to get out of the way and avoid the footstool. I think Mike just played out really well and he is going to survive. However, look at this. 88% oh, and he, he does have not he have a jump that to he switch off. lost the jump. Yeah, I mean, this is just such a huge lead for Kirby. Yeah, this is hard. But Mike also a very stable, emotionally stable player. Okay. Because he doesn't really care too much. He's been playing for a long time. He doesn't care too much about his turning results, I think. <laughs> He's happy if he gets far, but it doesn't hurt him if he doesn't. So he can definitely make a comeback. Ike, also a character that can make comebacks. For sure, he does have a lot of kill power, and when he does have that read... Wow, right. that was great from 
Uh, Mike from Chesby Shock not pushing the advantage of the, the footstool, but forcing Mike to just recover. And Mike realizing that he cannot go for the ledge because of that down air and just going on stage instead. Exactly. Very, very smart. Very smart by both players. Just the adaption and the counter adaption. Ooh, oh. the upstairs getting power shielded. Yeah, that was uh, clutch. And yeah, Kirby already too. too yep, um, very light, very small. It's gonna be hard to get him, get her, get it in those 50 50s. And just with Shock, just trying to close out this game, playing it slowly. Mike, nice gets the up tilt. tilt. Yep. And he does have a healthy amount of rage. He's not really in kill percents yet. Oh, nice pivot grab, trying to catch the roll in. Had to read, but messed up the execution just a little bit. Nice grab by Kirby. Another down throw, and the uh, bag is slowly closing around the neck of Mike. Look at that, the forward air just going over all of the Swiss Shocks walling. And a jab on the roll, very nice reaction by Mike. Mike playing very defensively, however, the Swiss Shock not hurrying any in any way, shape, or form. He's, he's just waiting oh, for his opportunity, and, and there that's it the is. Uh, set. Yeah, convincing. Yep. Chess Shock just playing very good. Very well played. First game, he was very even, uh, but then the second game, he just... Getting that early kill just stock, did yeah. a lot for him. Overall, in those matchups, the first stock means so much because rage means a lot. Um, yeah. Advantage Overall. just means a lot. Overall, in Smash 4, advantage is having very the lead, yeah. especially a stock lead. We only have two stocks. Those stocks count so much. Count a lot. And especially if you play a character like Kirby, you cannot let your opponent get away with rage. Because yep. as soon as your opponent has rage, you're pretty much in kill percents, regardless rage of what your percentage and is. and elite, especially, because Kirby can have a hard time getting in. Ike, then again, walling out four days, no problem. Yep, that big sword gonna come in clutch every single time. However, in the end, Jishwishok, what I really liked uh, about his play is that he really mixed in his grab game well with his like aerial game. So at the, at the exact moment that the opponent starts playing around his grab, he's there with the aerials. And at the exact moment the opponent is playing around his aerials, he starts going for the grabs. And it's really important for Kirby to have those balanced well. Yeah. Kirby, of course, not the best of characters, but no, definitely has but potential. Yeah, he, we, has, he, has a lot, he has a lot of tools that he can work yeah. with. It's just that those tools are all very niche. And using the right tool in the right scenario, that is what makes or breaks the Kirby. So we have Lord Snackington coming up, playing versus... So who's the other gentleman? Do you recognize him? Um, whom did you recognize? I'm sorry, I the, didn't hear The you. person sitting closest to us. I actually don't know. I'm sorry. I haven't I traveled abroad. I thought I had abroad. the inside info here. <laughs> I haven't traveled abroad as much as... Wait, who's that? Gomga. All right, Gomga. So you have Gomga versus Lord Snackington. Lord Snackington coming all the way from Dubai to uh, to please us with his, with his, uh, his Charizard. He does play a very mean Charizard. He has a secondary Mega Man as well that we okay. we've seen a little bit of it in at Deflagration. Yeah, but his um, mainstay is going to be Charizard. Just a second. Can we please appreciate that? We are in small Switzerland in Zurich and this tourney is more than just one continent. That's yeah, we great. have a lot that's of countries. Great. We have... Um, yeah, and more than one continent, even. That's true. That's, that's true. That's fucking great. And, um, I mean, <coughs> big props to the tournament organizers. They really yeah. did a good job in hard, fighting players hard out there. Seha, props to Hardreed Seha. Thank you very much for the great stream, for the great organization. He's not, not from Dubai. Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his... his <laughs> not Dubai. <laughs> Is it the United Arab Emirates? Yeah, UAE, yeah, yeah, UAE. Not Dubai. Let's go, not Dubai. Give it up for Le not Dubai in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Press one if you're not from Dubai. Honestly, um, I'm really excited to see how this is gonna go because we we have quite a few strong Charizards in Europe. We have um, Fire, obviously, <laughs> making it on the European PR, and yeah. there's also Virm from the UK, also wrapping Charizard. And you know, now we have Lord Snackington. Yes. Being, uh, being here all the way from, um, I think I think he had a six and a half hour flight to make it out here. So uh, great to see him. Great to see him come out 
actually went into Zurich with uh, Lord Snackleton and Kepler and some other people yesterday. It was really nice. He he took pictures of everything, which I mean, obviously he's <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of chances Tourists. to. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, why not? Smash is a great opportunity to travel, and if you are here, why not look at the city? Exactly. That's what's so great about Smash that it's more. more that sounds so cliche, but it's more than just Smash. Yeah, there's a lot of cultural stuff, especially in Europe, where every country has a different culture, right? Yeah, meet so many new people. See so many new places, yeah. so many new faces. So I think we're getting into game one. Yes, we are seeing Gomgem playing PV2 against V slash Lord Snackington playing his secondary Mega Man. Yeah, and I mean, I understand why Pikachu is very, very rough for Charizard to deal with. Charizard being a big body gets comboed very easily uh, because of his relatively one-dimensional recovery. He also has some issues getting around Pikachu's gimping tools. Yeah, I mean, you just gotta see that Electric just has the advantage against the flying type. Flying type, yep, for sure. On the other hand, Mega Man, I mean, just such a strong character, has a lot of strong yeah. kill moves, especially that up tilt. Um, and Lord Snackington using those lemons especially to interrupt the quick attacks. That's very yeah, strong and of course, as well. Uh, what Mega Man uh, got famous for basically in the beginning, he has those confirms with the footstool, yep. which is very early on getting knockouts. The the Z drop metal blade exactly. into footstool into I into hope we see lemons. some of that. Let's see. I don't know if uh, Snackington is familiar with the confirms. However, what we do see is this, these up air juggles. It's a lot of damage per up air. Wow, Ooh. nice throw. Ooh, that down air almost connecting Just and Lord Snackington. too short. Yep. And yeah, Gomgum Gom is having some trouble against this Mega Man. Not really getting too many openings and if he does, he doesn't really get combos done. Nice up smash out of shield, getting the first dog, only 65%. Yep, great punish by uh, Lord Snackington. And yeah, I mean, Pikachu is in a lot of cases kind of a, a, a chip character. He gets yep. a few hits. And then he resets to neutral. Good thing he does have a strong neutral. However, versus a character like Mega Man, he does not get a lot of mileage out of that strong neutral. Yeah, Mega Man is also kind of a chip character, but he doesn't even have to win neutral to chip. Yep. He just gets those... Those lemons. Uh, lemons, exactly. And then once you do commit into him, he has all the anti-approach options that he needs. That back air especially, and the upper as well. Both disjointed. Both leave him with a lot of room to, to set up traps. Yeah. And, and make you overcommit. Up smash into Thunder, not gonna commit. And the down at. Oh, Ooh. that was almost a really strong confirm. Ooh. And Lord Snackington. He's yeah, looking to end it. I can't speak. Lord Snackington trying to pop off. Up to Thunder, nice. Wow, that's not an easy confirm. Very well done I don't by Gumgum. It was confirmed, but at the, uh, at, it's at least a 50 50. Yep. And Gumgum realizing that and taking advantage of it. 70%, definitely something Pikachu can make up. But it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be really rough. Especially when those up tilts start flying out from Lord Snackington. Look at that, that's another up tilt. And Pikachu is just not the, the hardest punished character in the game. He's gonna. He's, he left two up tilts relatively unpunished so far. And you just cannot let that happen when Mega Man is yeah. up first. You. And he's setting up another ledge trap tight to just finish okay. it off with the F smash. Yeah, Lord Snackington really looking to end it now. And that might be his downfall. All the kill moves and nope. just like that. Nope, it isn't. It isn't. <laughs> it's not a downfall. He actually has a lot of strong kill options. And I think Becker is the strongest of all of them. Yeah, it's disjoint. It's It's huge. very fast. It's, it's a fast, multi-hit. It's big. It's strong. Yep, everything it's you pretty want. Pretty much everything you want. Yep, yeah, exactly. Um, especially with Mega Man's airspeed. He can just fly at you, throw out the back air. And even if it doesn't land, Pikachu has a hard time getting around it because Pikachu does not have those disjoints. And if he does go for a quick attack, you might just get caught by that, that back air because it's so lasting. Yeah, quick attack, of course. Very good movement option. Good or semi-good approach option, but very punishable if you know how to. You can just throw out the lasting hitbox and quick attack just loses. Yeah, quick attack does uh, squish and, and stretch the, the Pikachu hitboxes. <laughs> it looks so strange. It's really weird when you, when you pause it frame by frame. And oh, okay. Okay, Game you see a little bit of switch. City. I've never seen Lord Snackington Sonic before. Oh yeah, I didn't even realize it was still <laughs> blue, so I just did look. But yes, yeah, Sonic, interesting counterpick. I guess he wants to try out some characters if you are from the UAE. 
you probably don't get to travel that much and or you get you have to travel a lot to even get somewhere right so you have to take your chances if you want to try out new characters just like that north Tekkenson already looking strong he did have to read on the normal get up a little bit off on the execution though and the sonic is looking pretty solid so far yeah then again, I have to say, Gum Gum is not giving him too much trouble in just basically setting up the safe Sonic neutral and keeping the advantage. Looks he's like definitely him. trying, but he's not getting off too much. Yep, he's trying, but it's so hard because Pikachu, as we've mentioned, he does not have any disjoints. And when you have to play up close with a character like Sonic, he can get the most out of his invincible spin dash. Yeah. Okay, we see the down air. Oh, nice anti approach. Jab lock. He gets a dash attack at least. Pikachu's dash attack actually very, very strong. A kill option at It 5%. is definitely a kill option. And he and just wow. charges it and lets it rip, just giving him the fist. That's the first stock. Only 64 gets the double down air. Interesting choice. It's it's the Hypno Smash, right? <laughs> it's been a meme forever, and just like that, it's gonna be that early kill gonna be very very important for wow. Sonic. Nice pressure by Sonic there at the ledge, not getting too much off of it, but just just showing Gum Gum that Lord Snackington just he's confident in playing up close even with Sonic. He gets the shield pressure, he stays there. Yep. He doesn't let him out of the corner for free. However, this deficit is definitely building up and. It's it just gets harder and harder. Yeah, it just gets harder and harder, especially for a character like Pikachu. And the downer, I mean, it has been working out for him. However, Lord Sackleton hasn't been losing too much because of it either. So he can just kind of stick to his game plan until Gum Gum starts punishing nice him for it, just like that. A fourth smash, very, very strong kill option for Pikachu, obviously. It's also a very, very safe smash yeah. as well. And this is kind of similar to game one, um, about 100% on Gum Gum as he gets off the first stock of Lord Snackington. So comeback is possible, but hard. Let's see how Gum Gum gets it started here. It is going to be a little bit of a whiff punish right there by Lord Snackington. Lord a Snackington. lot of moves, but not a lot of things hitting so far. Lord Snackington, one of the most aggressive Sonics I've seen in a long time, actually. Yep. Maybe that's just because he oh, sees that, that he has the pressure walling. to win this with his offense alone and doesn't need to stay back. Maybe he just plays like this. Maybe yep. he's preparing for Smash 5, where Sonic can't cancel the spin dash, so yeah, it's so not he a has safe. to play aggressively. Yeah, and he has the tools in Smash 5 to play aggressively. Yep. However, it is his Smash 4, and just like that, Snackington getting the win with two of his characters. Two of his secondaries. Yep, very and impressive showing. I'm convincing. really excited to see how he does tomorrow. and. And you know, not today. We are playing until top eight today, so yep. definitely stay tuned in the stream. We have a lot of smash for you, a lot of smash, and already the next competitors are lining up to play on stream. Okay, so yeah, this is a guy I talked about earlier, uh, Crazy Shroom, one yep. of the rising players in Switzerland, Cloud DK. Do you know the other one? <laughs> Will is already hitting us up. No, sorry, info. Oh, he's a French player, alright. Okay, so this is gonna be the last game of pools for you guys. And afterwards, we're gonna switch to doubles, which top is gonna four. be top four. Uh, and we're go also gonna do a quick commentator switch since I am gonna be playing in top four. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna say. But yeah, so final match of pools, let's focus. We have a French player versus uh, Crazy Shroom. And I'm really excited to see how Crazy Shroom does. Um, because we have a lot of cloud players in Europe, but we don't have a lot of standout cloud players in Europe. Yeah. There is uh, Fabi, Purple Age, and Ezreal, and Glutinous Cloud as well, also strong cloud. Um, but outside of that, we just have a lot of like mid-level clouds, and I'm really curious yeah. to see how Crazy Shroom uh, compares to the top-level clouds in Europe. Also, kind of mid-level cloud can still be dangerous because sure. cloud just is such a good character to be honest especially at that mid level he's so consistent um, has those big disjoints you just force your opponent to respect a lot of options yeah. and you can get so much mileage out of that yeah i'm also interested in seeing how crazy from fares against these um 
out of country players because he's very very active local and he's one of the guys that can regularly beat Kepler in Switzerland. Okay. Um, so it's interesting to see how is, it compares is he to on the players. PR on the Swiss PR. Um, we didn't have one for a long time. I'm pretty sure he will be on the next one. Okay, where, 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 where do you think? Low top ten. Low top ten. All right. So he is one of Swiss's uh, better players. Yeah, sure. Let's see what uh, what France has to offer here. Really excited to see the character picks. Can you take a peek for me? Ah, there we go. Lucario versus Donkey Kong. That's actually a horrible match for Lucario. Uh, actually, <laughs> I don't think so. You don't think so? All right. It's bad, but not too bad. Because Lucario can pressure DK very well. Um, especially at the ledge. DK should not lift okay, the okay, ledge. Okay, okay, okay. Counterpoint, counterpoint. Lucario yes, can... Dong, counterpoint. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if Lucario you get can pressure him well if he does if have aura. If you get the Ding Dong percent, that's true. you're good. That's true, if you do get through it. However, when you play Donkey Kong in the way, for example, Tweak does, um, Tweak does not interact with you when you're in Ding Dong percents. He, the only thing he does is try to grab you. So you don't you don't get through Ding Dong percents. You either kill Donkey Kong or you die. Yeah, but Lucario has the tools to kill Donkey Kong. I think. Even not in Ding Dong percents? Not too early know. then? We'll see. I'm really interested to see if your if your theory is fr true. And another factor, Lucario just ha just has the combo game of Sheik at low percent. That's true. However, due to having low aura, he does do less damage, and that is a big deal. And I think I'm not sure because uh, Lucario is uh, medium to heavy. I think this is might be it? a kill. No. Nope. Oh. And yeah, he's already out of Ding Dong percent. Yep. Grounded Ding Dong 50-50, not no. gonna land and... I don't think that was 50-50, uh, I think he's better off just going for the high right. one. I mean, ground, Grounded Ding Dong can 50-50 yeah. if you are out of the Ding Dong range. And just like that, the upbeat, that is not gonna be a great combo breaker versus uh, Lucario. Yeah, as I said, I think Lucario has the tools that it needs to beat DK. Okay. And I mean, so far, it looks like you're you're proven right by, uh, by Wari here. Yeah, fun fact, I actually have a... Pocket Lucario and played Crazy Shroom and we went 1-1 today. Okay. Lucario against DK. Okay. That's why I'm pretty um, sure about my statement. Oh, and oh ooh, nice combo upbeat. breaker up B. This time it did work. However, I'm not a big fan of even using that up B at all since last time it got him killed with the up smash. So yeah. going for it again, that's just such a risky maneuver even though it did work. I really like the down air usage by Wari. Kind of shield poking and confirming yep. it into the grab. One thing I think he could use more is the crisp uh, Aura's Fairy movement because yep. he's very, oh. um, as far as I see, very one-dimensional with it. Basically just... Yeah, what do you do there, SDK? But somehow he drops the ledge fairy. Oh, the grab? What? What just happened? I think there? he did not want to ding-dong him because that would that push him out of the ding-dong range, right? So instead oh. he decided to just add some damage and then the next grab he gets he can get a ding on kill. Yeah, Wari just messed up there. I think that was it, actually. He should... Oh, that's it. Ah, uh, there it is. I don't know what Crazy Shroom did there, but he could not get out of the combo. Especially when the Aura Sphere picks you up from below, from yeah. down the ledge. It's, you have even less options to get out of that confirmed 2-up smash. SDK is just hard. Sometimes you can't even get to the ledge because you just get two, fra two framed over and over and over. DK's disadvantage is definitely really rough to work around. Yeah, especially at the ledge, you just... Sometimes, especially with... I mean, with Lucario, there are characters. I think DK is one of them, but not really. Falcon, uh -huh. for example, you just don't get around the aero aura sphere if it's big enough. Exactly. Uh, DK is definitely one of those. He has a hard time getting around it. On lower to mid percents, he can do a drop jump up air. However, even that can be very, very risky. Yeah. And if, if you get shielded, you just get... You just die. You, have, you, you go back to the ledge and you either you die or you get down aired and down air stage spike is very hard to tech. Tech, yep. So, Crazy Shroom sticking to the DK and going to Dreamland in this scenario. We could have full combos by Lucario. Two full combos, 24%. Nice dash Meanwhile, attack. Meanwhile, Donkey Kong, two free, free just single hits. Just rolling around on Dreamland. <laughs> Nice pivot grab. Lucario has a pivot grab range that can definitely contest DK's. 
That is, his pivot grab is huge. Look at that juggle, the neutral air on landing, and the grab, is that gun? No! No. Oh, I think he wanted to get the re-grab on the platform, but mess it up somehow. I think, yeah, I think Lucario was on too low, but I think this is definitely going to be it. it. But he messes Lucario up. Crazy is true. so floaty. How is this not true? I think that was true. I think that was just a, a misinput. Okay. However, that's going to be that's gonna be great for Wari. Oh, just like that, the up air. And now this is huge. If he doesn't get grabbed before, he's out of uh, Ding Dong percent. Lucario's I don't know if Lucario is even still in the Ding Dong percents. Uh, he is definitely a floaty character. I mean, and with no rage, even if he was in, if he gets one or two openings, he's out of there. He has right now, which is rather rarely, he has the tools in his own hands to get out of Ding Dong to percent, but exactly. just by giving rage to Crazy Troop. Oh, he the almost got it. An up smash almost kills already, even on heavy DK. Definitely with the aura, look at that. The recovery right, right onto the stage, and all Ooh. the pressure by, uh, by Wari just barely, so barely not working out. Lucario is so hyped. I love Lucario. And Ooh, once he gets again, a hit. Okay. Crazy Shroom trying to up you out of the comp, yeah, out what, of the setup, what, what and it's do? not what happening. And just what like that, what do you do? Worry. What do you do? There's nothing you can do. That's yeah. just a true setup into that. And that's why I believe Lucario beats DK. Case in point. No comment, my guy. No, no comment. However, I think that is the end of pools. Yeah. So we are gonna switch to to doubles. Uh, yes, doubles top four coming up. Thank you for commentating with yeah, me. Yeah, it was Good luck pleasure. In the doubles tournament. Thank you. And uh, guys, stay tuned. We're gonna be right back with doubles for you guys. Yes. So yeah, hang on tight. After getting those kind of low hype pool matches, I mean they were cool, but it's not. Yeah, we got uh, all the top players on deck for for top four. So yeah. stay tuned. Of course. See ya. I'm staying, of course. <laughs>